What's going on YouTube family? This is your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to the full unboxing, first initial thoughts and impressions video for the Google Pixel Fold. Um, super excited about this device. Um, you know, before its launch, you know, there was a lot of back and forth. I seen a bunch of renders and things online um, that Google was coming through with the foldable. I heard that they had scrapped the idea and then they had picked it back up and it was back under production. Um, all kinds of different rumors as to whether we were or were not going to get this device. And here we are. Um, now I know this device has been out for a couple of weeks now. I mean, you know, as soon as it dropped or even a little bit before, uh, uh the internet was just flooded with videos. And, um, if you, if you, uh, pre-ordered it during that first wave, right after Google announced it, then you got yours a little early. Um, I didn't pre-order mine throughout that first wave. Uh, today is today is july 16th sunday um i actually i got mine delivered um on friday uh which was the 14th and i actually i got this through at&t at&t they got a sweet deal going on right now and there's no trade-in required to where if you pre-order the device through at&t you get it 50 percent off and so how that works is um you know, typically if you put this on installments because of how expensive the phone is, which is 1800 bucks plus taxes, your monthly installment bill is going to be like maybe, you know, f anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks per month. Well, what AT&T is doing is they're paying half of that monthly portion. So rather than paying that 50 or 60 bucks, which will be the monthly installment without the promo, I'm only paying like 25 and AT&T is crediting the other portion. So after 24 months, I've only paid 900 bucks for this device. So rather than just buying it outright and just spending the two G's up front, like I was going in to do initially, I figure, hey, I'll just hang on to my money and just, you know, <laughs> make installment payments and I'm getting it for half off. I mean, so that's a, that's a great deal. And there's no trade in required. All you got to do is just go into a store and say, hey, I want to pre-order this device. Um, and you should be able to take advantage of that promo. Now, I don't know how much longer that promo is going on. So if you're looking at getting this device, you may want to act fast. All right. Now, <clears throat> uh, speaking of that price tag, again, this is a pretty, pretty hefty price tag. It's $1,799.99. plus taxes, depending on where you're at. Taxes for me was uh, $189. 53 i believe so you know and, and that's the thing with the promo you do have to pay the taxes up front um but uh yeah that that's a lot so <laughs> you know uh just know that depending on where you live i mean you know you may be you know paying a pretty hefty price tag in in, in taxes um but uh yeah so what is that 1800 dollars or darn near 2000 gonna get you all right, it's gonna get you a 7.6 inch foldable OLED display featuring 120 Hertz. The pixel, uh, the pixel count is 1840 by 2208. Uh, we do have HDR 10 plus. We've got a PPI pixel density of 378. Uh, the peak max brightness for this device is 1450. Um, We've got an 82.7% screen to body ratio while the device is opened. And I'll talk a little bit about that once I get the device out of the box here, because there are some, uh, uh, some, um, uh, some, some borders. And I know that, you know, some people have had some things to say about them, uh, while the device is open. I don't really find them to be all that intrusive, but Hey, to each their own. Um, you know, some people would have liked to have seen just a completely borderless display. Um, and, I, I feel that. I understand that. Now we do have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the front of this device. Obviously, while the device is opened up, it's plastic, um, and it's it's like a hard plastic material. Uh, we have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the back as well with an aluminum frame. Now the cover display is 5.8 inches. This too is an OLED panel at 1080 by 2092 pixels. This too is 120 hertz also featuring HDR. Um, we have a 17.4 by nine aspect ratio. And I really like the aspect ratio of that cover display. Seen in a lot of uh, other people's reviews that 
oftentimes they're able to use this device with the cover display and not have to open the fold up. Uh, and, and that's because, you know, the cover display has a form factor that's kind of typical to your your your, uh, your 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 typical candy bar style device, but it's just it's a it's a bit wider. Um, and so uh, I've had the phone in my hand. Yes, I've already cracked the box open. I mean, you know, getting it Friday and doing this unboxing two days later. I mean, I couldn't wait two days to do the unboxing. I had to get it in my hand and get it set up. And so I have had it in my hand and firsthand experience. I mean, that cover display is pretty nice. Um, and you can very easily use it and do all the daily functions that you would do on any other smartphone, literally without having to open up the device. All right, now, um, the cover displays PPI pixel density is 408. We've got a 1550 nit peak brightness for the cover display. And the hinge is covered in, it's a multi-alloy steel that's um, mirror polished. So if you, you know, you kind of hold the, uh, the hinge up to your face, you know, it's kind of got that mirror look. You'll see your reflection or whatnot, um, but it's a multi-alloy steel and uh, the, the hinge seems to be pretty sturdy. Now, the internal specifications, we've got the Google Tensor G2 5 nanometer SOC chip. Now, what I'm gonna say about that real quick is I would have liked to have seen the Google Tensor G3. Simply because, I mean, the G2 we've seen in the Pixel 7 and uh, the 7 Pro. We see the, the Tensor 2 chip in the Google 7A, which is a, you know, a $500 device. Um, and so it's just, you know, and my man, you know, uh, Tech Odyssey, you know, he, he hit it on the head. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of weird, you know, spending this kind of money for a device where usually i mean you're paying this kind of money because of the processor and everything that it entails and its ability to enhance or just giving you the overall power in your hand um but just knowing that the device that they just launched previous to this was the was the pixel 7a which too had the g2 chip in it and that phone is 499 and so you give us the fold finally and it also has the g2 chip in it and it's 1800 bucks i mean so you know I, I feel some kind of way about that. You know, I, I, I would have rather, I mean, not to say that the G2, I'm not trying to knock it. I'm not trying to say that it's not a powerhouse because I have the Google Pixel 7. Actually, I just recently sold it, um, but I still have my 7A and I mean, remarkable performance. I mean, so I know that this thing is definitely gonna perform, but when you start talking about benchmarks, you know, scores in comparison with, you know, some of the latest Snapdragon processors, like say the 8 Gen 2, or hell, even the 8 Gen Plus One, <laughs> you know, man, I mean, I, I feel like I, 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 spending this kind of money, I would have rather one of those chipsets been in this device, but it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. I'm not trying to knock it. It is what it is, but I'm just saying it's kind of weird paying 500 bucks for a device and it's got the same chipset as a device that I just spent two Gs for, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of a head scratcher there. Okay, <clears throat> Google Tensor G2 5 nanometer chipset. We've got an octa-core CPU. We've got a Mali G710 MP7 GPU. Now we've got 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. This is the 256 gigabyte variant. On both variants, you get 12 gigs of RAM with UFS 3.1 running Android 13. Okay, now the camera system, it's a triple camera setup on the rear. All right, now we've got five total cameras on this device. We've got three on the rear, one on the cover display, and then when you open up the device, we have a selfie camera on the internal display, okay? Now, the primary sensor for the triple camera on the rear is a 48 megapixel sensor. We've got a 10.8 megapixel telephoto lens. Um, we have another 10.8 megapixel ultra wide lens with a hundred, and where's that field of view? I believe the field of view, it says 121. Maybe I'm looking at that wrong. But it is an ultra wide sensor. Okay, we do have um, dual pixel PDAF, laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, five time optical zoom. Uh, we do have uh, 4K recording at uh, 30 or 60 FPS, 1080p recording at 30, 60, 120, or 240. Um, 
And then the, uh, let's see, the selfie camera. On the internal display is an eight megapixel sensor. And then on the cover display, we have a 9.5 megapixel sensor. This is a wide lens and that's featuring dual pixel PDAF also can uh, record at 4K at 30 or 60 FPS and also 1080p at 30 or 60 FPS. Um, battery life. We have a 4,821 milliamp hour non-removable battery. Obviously, we've got a Type-C port 3.2 OTG on the go. Uh, we have wireless charging and there is reverse power share as well. So we do have reverse wireless charging. Uh, it's probably not going to be super fast wireless charging. Um, and obviously, I mean, due to, well, this box looks thick enough to where they could have put a, um, a charging brick in here. But uh, yeah, ladies and gents, there is no charging brick in the box here with the pixel fold after spending all that money, um, which is insane to me. Truly insane. All right, additional features, we've got NFC dual stereo speakers, side mounted fingerprint reader that works really well. Uh, we do have facial recognition always on display, now playing, auto transcribe, VPN by Google One, face unlock, five years of pixel updates. Um, and we do have, um, let's see, I know that there's a, um, there's a water resistance, it's XP, 8x water resistance. Okay, now the colors that you can get this is in is porcelain white and obsidian black, which obviously this is the obsidian black color. Um, the device the device weighs 283 grams and it's 5.8 millimeters in thickness. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, I mean I've already cracked this thing out of the box and got it set up, but I just wanted to give you guys a tour on what it is you know, if you decide to cop this phone, okay? On the rear of the box, hashtag team pixel. And uh, that's, that's what it is. And so when you take off the lid here, you are going to be greeted with the device. And yeah, I, I packaged it up exactly how it was when I took it out, all right? So this is what it is, right? When you take it out and go ahead and Remove that. Here is the device. Boom, beautiful. And I, I, I feel like, you know, the Google is, um, this really reminds me of like a, 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 a slightly smaller version of the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. And so um, I've been hearing rumors that Microsoft is in the laboratory working on a Surface Duo 3, but then I've also been hearing too that if they, that it's gonna be like a clamshell design rather than the two screens side by side. And so I don't know, I mean, I'll say for now, if you are somebody that has a, 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 a Surface Duo 2 and you wanna upgrade to something, but you're still kind of used to that form factor and you want something that's comparable, then I would say, the Pixel Fold is probably going to be your your your, your the, the 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 safest bet, you know, as it pertains to getting something that's, you know, very very familiar, very similar to the Surface Duo Two. Um, so Dre, if you're watching this, man, I sold my Surface Duo to my brother, and uh, yeah, yeah, Dre, man, this uh, <laughs> this right here, bro, I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and power this bad boy on real quick. Okay, and we'll let that get situated and then we'll go to the box. First net, built with AT&T. Obviously the SIM card comes in the box. Uh, first net, I, well, I'm a first responder because I'm in the medical field and so I have first net service with AT&T. Um, but when you take up this little border here, this is nothing. I mean, this just has some instruction on how to care for the screen. So. Foldable screen care, flexible screens are softer than traditional phone screens. So avoid contact with sand, crumbs, fingernails, or sharp objects, okay? Do not remove pre-installed screen protector as it can cause damage. Don't apply a third-party screen protector, 
Okay, so it's giving you some clear instruction right there on how to maintain your pixel fold. All right, so underneath that, we've got the Google literature there. Um, okay, here we have our charging cord, which I'm just gonna leave in there because I already have like two or three of them joints and I don't need another one. Um, and then here is our transfer tool. So whatever device that you are using that you are coming from, going to the new Pixel Fold, then you can very easily connect this device to your Pixel Fold and your old device and transfer all of your data over to your brand new shiny Pixel Fold. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, that is it as far as everything that comes in the box. All right, so like I said, I mean, it would have been nice to see this phone get a charging brick in the box, especially after all that money that's being paid um, I think that that's crazy. Um, my understanding too is that the Pixel Fold also does not have uh, pin support. And so, you know, that, that, that would be a, uh, a nice integration, you know, at some point. Or I don't know if maybe just like, a, just like a third party stylus or something that you can get from like Best Buy or something will work with this thing. I don't know, I have to test that out. Um, but off the rip from what I know, I mean, there's no, there's no like, you know, stylus pin support or anything like that. Um, so yeah, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with the Google Pixel Fold. And so beautiful hardware. I mean, Corning Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and the rear of this device. Again, this is that beautiful obsidian color. And I just like how like that, that two-tone color, how you've got the obsidian black. And then this is like a, like a grayish, you know, color, you know, that, that, that the camera housing but then the camera lenses are black. I mean, it's just a, it's a really nice touch. I mean, you know, this is definitely something that when you see it, I mean, even if you're, you know, if you're looking at it from afar, I mean, this is a pixel through and through. Okay. Uh, there's that beautiful display there. I mean, God, this just, it feels really good in the hand. It's not that thick as well. I've got my, my Galaxy Z Fold 4 here and you could see just the thickness. Well, let me see me get them in my hand properly here so I can do the comparison. So look at that. Look how much thicker the Z Fold is over the Pixel Fold. Um, yeah. Yeah, this thing is really, it's really, really, really thin. All right, so again, 5.8 inches. And to me, this is like a sweet spot. I mean, it really, it really would be dope if, uh, if um, if there was like a single display that was made like this with that, I, I mean, I really enjoy that 5.8 inch form factor on the Microsoft Surface Duo and the Duo 2. And I, I, I love it here. I mean, I think that this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's tall and wide enough for viewing content to be super solid. You know, it's it's wide enough to be able to do everything that you're going to need to do. That's why, you know, you really I mean, you can if you if you don't really want to open up this phone, you don't really have to. You know, I mean, this outer display. I mean, let's see here. I mean, here's my. My Moto Razor. Plus 2023. OK, got all those updates situated. Okay, so you guys can take a look at. So now the Moto Razor, it's 5.9 inches. I mean, so opened up, I mean, it's quite, it's very much so taller than the Pixel Fold, but the Pixel Fold seems a bit wider. Okay, so the Razor is very conducive to your typical, you know, candy bar style, you know, design device as far as its width is concerned. Okay. The Pixel Fold is just a tad bit wider. It's smaller and it's wider. So I, I mean, I really, really, really like that form factor. I really like that form factor. Okay. Now, premium materials. I mean, when you take this thing out of the box, I mean, you're gonna feel just that, that premium. I mean, again, Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 6 on the front and the rear and then plastic on the front once we open up the display. Now, again, 5.8 inches corner to corner. Here, let's see, let's go ahead and lock the device here. We've got the hinge. Again, this is a 
a multi-alloy steel hinge. And so you see that mirror finish, how it's just kind of shiny. You can see the glare off of it. I can kind of, you know, see my reflection in it. Um, nice touch. I mean, just the color combination is, is, is really, really solid. I mean, I'm really liking this thing. I mean, I mean, definitely keep a case on the device. Definitely keep a case on this device because you want to protect your investment because this phone costs $2,000. But I mean, I am not mad at anybody that wants to rock this phone booted, buck and naked. I mean, if you don't want to have any case or screen protector, just as long as you don't drop it, I mean, you got to respect the tech. But I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of hardware. All right. Now to the right, we have some antenna lines here and here. And typical Google fashion, we've got the power button and that also doubles as the fingerprint sensor up top. And then beneath that, we have our volume rocker. All right, now on the top of the device, we have antenna lines. The antenna lines are placed in the same area on both the top and bottom displays. If you can see that there, right there, if you could see that in the reflection. All right, here is a, let's see, this is a noise canceling microphone. Here is a 5G antenna line right there. We've got some other antenna lines. Up top here, we've got one of the dual stereo speakers. And you'll see the speakers here. I mean, they're not facing at you, they're facing up, and then the other one is facing down. Um, so to the bottom of the device, if you can see that, we've got more antenna lines. There's our bottom firing speaker grill, another one of the mics. Here's our Type-C port for charging. And then here is our SIM ejector tool, which I, I can't, no, this is not dual SIM. I was gonna say, I can't remember if it was dual SIM or not, but no, it is not dual SIM compatible. Um, but we do have the ability to have a PSIM or an eSIM, okay? A PSIM is physical SIM card, eSIM is electronic SIM card, where you just download the SIM information to the device and you don't have to have a SIM card put into the device and it works just as well as a physical SIM card. Okay, then to the back of the device, we've got just our G logo right there for, you know, Google, letting you know that this is a Google product. God, I'm just, I can't stop marveling at how beautiful this phone is. Um, I do have a case that I ordered from Amazon over here. I'll drop the link for that in the description if uh, you're interested in the case that I bought for my device. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just a very, very beautiful piece of hardware. Now, when we open up the device, boom. There we have a 7.6 inch display. All right, and here's what the display looks like, ladies and gentlemen, when you open this thing up. I mean, this is, this is, this is beautiful. I mean, I, I feel like the tech is headed in the right direction as far as trying to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, consolidate phone and tablet. Um, I just, I don't know, I just recently bought another iPad. Um, I don't know, for some reason, I mean, I just felt the need to, to have an iPad on deck and it's not, it's not an, LTP, uh, an LTE iPad, it's just Wi-Fi only, but it's like, I got my Z Fold 4 here, which, you know, that's a phone slash tablet as well. And it's like, now I have this and after playing with this for the last couple of days, I'm just like, man, I may return that iPad. I mean, it, it's not the iOS, <laughs> you know, ecosystem or look, but it's like everything that I can do on my iPad as a tablet, I could do here. I could also do on my Z Fold 4 as well, okay? But I mean, I'm really, really, really liking this form factor here. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, it just, it's, it fits snugly in the pocket. It's, it's definitely got some weight to it. I mean, it's definitely a premium device, but it's not too heavy. Um, and you'll see as well, and it, it does rock a little bit, like if you could see, like I know that some people have mentioned that it doesn't like open like all the way. Like to me, that that is a that's it's not a factor to me. It's not a problem. I mean, when it's opened up, it's not like it's not completely flat, right? But to me, that's that's not a problem. I mean, I I don't need the device to be open any wider than this. Okay, people need to understand this is this is not the Surface Duo. I mean, so it it doesn't have a 360 hinge where you can just you know fold it any old kind of way. All right, so it opens wide enough for my liking. I can very easily, you know, view the content that I need to view. Now, let's talk about these borders real quick. I mean, cause you see those bezels, right? You see that we got the bezels at the top and the bottom and some bezels on the side. 
To me, these bezels are totally non-intrusive. One of the other things too that I like about the fact that we've got the bezels, especially up top, is our eight megapixel camera is right there and it's in the bezel. You see that? It's not on the display where, you know, you've got a little, little hole punch, you know, which, you know, I, I, don't, I typically, I, I usually don't mind that as well, but you know, you got some people out there that are sticklers for, you know, watching content and they're, oh, just the, 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 the selfie cameras interfering with my, with my media consumption. It's, it's, it's interfering with my, with my viewing experience. Well, you don't have to worry about that with the pixel fold because the camera is right up top in the bezel. It's not on the display. It's right here. Okay. Under the bezel, not under the display. Okay. Um, so yeah and actually you know what i i just recently i i had the google i had the pixel tablet and and i returned it because i mean i had it and then i ran into a display unit of this in at&t and this is the same experience when this thing is open that you're going to have on the pixel tablet and mind you the pixel tablet dope tablet Okay, it's nice how it comes with the little dock station and, you know, you once you put it on the dock then it just becomes like a big screen, you know, uh, a hub, you know, to control, you know, all your smart stuff in your home and all that type of stuff. But I knew that I had this coming. And once I started playing with this, I was just like, man, this is just like a smaller version of the Pixel tablet. Didn't need both. So, so I went ahead and I returned the pixel tablet, but I mean, great tablet. I can definitely recommend it. Um, but it's like, man, I mean, if you're planning on getting one of these, what, what do you need the tablet for? You know, because I mean, you, when this thing is closed, you can use it as a full fledged phone. When it's open, you can use it as a full fledged tablet. You got two separate displays. I mean, so you can multitask. And I mean, as it pertains to multitasking, ladies and gentlemen, for me, the Surface Duo and the Surface Duo 2 spoiled me with the two separate displays. So when I think of multitasking, I don't necessarily think about the way that it's done on the Z Fold 4 here, where, you know, you've got, you know, uh, and just, and even, even, you know, even after just the, the, uh, uh, put this side by side if I can. There we go. Okay. Just the, the aspect ratios for these two devices. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, after having the pixel fold in hand and just, you know, how comfortable it is, it seems just more natural. I mean, I feel like I would always choose this form factor over this, but mainly because of I got so spoiled by the Microsoft Surface Duo 2 and the aspect ratio of it with the 5.8 inch displays, two separate displays to where you could do two, two totally different things at the same time. I mean, it was so useful. And so the Pixel is, is offering that even though you can multitask on the Z Fold 4, this, just the way, the way that it unfolds, each side, you can see the crease in the middle, but each side is so thin. So it's like when you're multitasking on the Pixel Fold here, I mean, it's as if you're getting two, two separate 5.8 inch displays, very similar to what you find on the Surface Duo and the Surface Duo 2. And it's like once you've multitasked on that device, and it's very easy to just will you in because it's so easy and everything just happens so naturally as it's supposed to. And I understand that you could do more things here. You could have two screens on the Z Fold 4, one thing here, one thing here, and then you can actually open up another window and have something else going on. Like, that's cool, but I mean, that's not a feature that I ever use for one. And for two, it's just, it just feels better to multitask on an aspect ratio like the Pixel Fold or the, uh, the, um, the Surface Duo or the Surface Duo 2. So yeah, I, I know that on the 26th of this month, you know, Samsung, we've got unpacked right around the corner. They're going to be releasing, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Z Fold 5 and the Z Flip 5, 
you know, definitely looking forward to, you know, seeing, you know, how they're going to, you know, how they're going to, you know, combat, you know, these things. You know, I know that the Flip 5 is coming straight at, you know, Motorola here. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be, you know, interesting to see what they do with that. But I can already tell you right now, I mean, if Samsung doesn't have an outer display on the Flip comparable to this, it, it ain't going, it ain't, it ain't going, it ain't going to survive. <laughs> Sorry, Samsung Knights, it ain't gonna survive. Because even this display, this phone right here, I mean, if you don't want to open it, you don't have to. I mean, this display is a fully functioning display, right? And I mean, so if Samsung can't counteract that with their own fully functional outer display on the flip, it's curtains for the flip. It's curtains for the flip. All right. But uh, yeah, I mean, so you know, and the home screen, it's already set up and everything. So I don't need to go through the whole rigmarole of, you know, setting it up and all that. But the setup was fairly easy. You just go through the prompts, set up your fingerprint. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the home screen. And I mean, performance on this thing, again, I mean, the, the G2, the, the Tensor G2 is a, is a proven uh, processor, right? You know, Pixel 7 Pro, Pixel 7, 7a, um, you know, I never had the seven pro, but I had the seven just recently sold. I've got the seven a, I have this now, even in the pixel tablet that I had, the only thing that I really didn't care too much for on the pixel tablet was the fact that it, it didn't have a high refresh rate display. It was at 60 Hertz. And I'm like, come on, man. I mean, it's 2023. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you know, come on pixel, you know, you can't give us a, a, a at least a 90 Hertz display in 2023 on your brand new tablet. Um, but I mean, you know, this you know, this actually one ups the pixel tablet because, you know, it's got that higher refresh rate. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, performance is beautiful. Nothing phone two versus the Google pixel seven, a camera face off. Oh, I have to check that out. And speaking of nothing, my action, my, my nothing, uh, phone two is actually going to be delivered tomorrow. So I'm going to be doing an unboxing and, and giving the nothing phone to the pristine treatment. Um, so you guys stay tuned for that, but, uh, yeah, Phone is very, very responsive to the touch. Uh, let's see. So this is what YouTube is gonna look like. And it's just giving some little prompts here. All right, sign in is pristine. I thought I was already signed in. All right, let's go. Uh, connect YouTube TV. Nah, I don't wanna do that. All right. Oh, Nick Ackerman a day ago. So Pixel, uh, I have to check him out, his first impressions video. But uh, yeah. So, I mean, you see, I mean, once once I'm in the app, I mean, everything is just nice and smooth and fluid. Let's take it to Spotify real quick. Um, YouTube music. And I mean, you know, these are huge, huge you know, uh, uh, apps that have a lot of music files in them and it just opens them right up. I mean, so, you know, the, the G2, I mean, it's a very solid performer, right? Very, very solid performing device. Very solid. Um, it's just, I don't know. It just seems weird just spending two G's on a phone when I just paid four, 500 bucks, you know, for the 7A. Um, now I know that some people have talked about like certain apps they're not optimized for this 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 um this you know the 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 bigger screen you know once it's opened up okay um and so you get these black bars and so depending on which 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 hand you're holding the device in if you're holding it in your left hand and you want to just kind of you know scroll with your left thumb or whatever you can do that okay you can double tap the display to move it to the right or you can double tap it again to get it centered. Now we do have app continuity, which means that if I'm doing an app on the display here, and another thing to get the, to get an app full screen is just to turn it this way. Now it's full screen, okay? And here just with this white backdrop, I mean, you can get a better idea of, you know, these, these uh, the, the, the borders. But again, I mean, the borders to me are not, they're just, they're just not a problem. <laughs> You know, some people, oh man, I need a, oh, I need a bezel list. I mean, come on. I mean, 
again, I can't, I can't knock no one's hustle, man. I mean, if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. So I'm not trying to knock you if that's you. But I mean, it's such a minor little thing compared to everything that this device is offering. It's like, why nitpick over bezels, you know? Um, but now what I was talking about was the app continuity. And so what that is, is you see I'm in the Best Buy app. When I close my Pixel Fold and I unlock it, I'm in the Best Buy app. And you'll see that this, this, is, this is just like what it would be on a typical candy bar style device, okay? 12 gigs of RAM, everything is held in the RAM very well. Go back to YouTube Music. Okay, pop back in the Best Buy, Amazon, Spotify. You see that everything is held in the RAM quite nicely the way that it ought to be. All right. And we'll go ahead and get all that stuff out of here. I mean, so. All right, y'all, sorry about that. I had a little bit of a microphone malfunction that I had to take care of real quick. So here we are back in. Um, now, while I was troubleshooting that, I decided to uh, throw the case on this on this device. And what I, I ordered from Amazon, it was about 20 bucks, and it's called the 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 Lib Eagle, I guess I'm saying that, pronouncing, uh, pronouncing that correctly, rather, uh, case for smartphone. And what it is, it's, it's a case that protects the whole device I should have, well, I should have put it on on camera so you guys could see it, but it also has a screen protector on right there. And so you can see like the phone, it slips into the little housing and it has on the, on the rear, which it makes it a little bulky, but it has like this little thing on the back where it's got a little kickstand. Um, and so, you know, you can prop your device up you know, I'm still trying to get used to the screen or to the to the case rather. Um, it's actually kind of, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this case. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna continue to rock this case because it definitely adds, you know, some bulk to the device. And so um, I guess like on a phone that's already like that, that has the heft that this, de that this device has. I mean, if I were gonna rock a case on it, which I am for sure. Um, I would want to get something as lightweight and as thin as possible, not necessarily something that's going to add to the weight. I mean, I do like the way that the case protects the device, but just this little this little thing right here, like if there was a way in which I could take that off, I mean, I don't necessarily need a hint or a, a kickstand because the phone, I mean, you know, you can prop it up. It doesn't necessarily have like a tent mode, but you could set it up like this while you're viewing content and that that that's solid for me like that's all i need i mean if i can just see content on the upper display and on the bottom display you know i've got controls or i can kind of do other things you know i'm i'm good with that like i don't necessarily have to like have the phone propped up i mean it is good to have a kickstand but i, I just gotta you know figure out how this thing because when you open up the phone it's it it's weird like the way that it sits when the phone is open so yeah, I'll, I'll have an up, uh, a more uh, 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 in tune, defined update on this case when I do the full pristine review. But um, <clears throat> as I was saying before the interruption, I mean, you're gonna get a, a, a relatively smooth experience. I mean, if you've handled the Pixel 7, the 7 Pro or the 7A, I mean, the way that phone performed, I mean, you're gonna get the same type of performance here on the Google Pixel Fold. Now, we'll jump down into the settings real quick. and. You know, this is Android at its purest form. It's a Pixel device. Um, and so again, if you're familiar with Android or Pixel phones in particular, then uh, the, the, the settings menu is gonna be very familiar to you. I mean, you know, we've got the network and internet, um, connected devices, apps, notifications, battery. As you can see, I'm down to 19%. But when we click on battery, I mean, it'll show the battery, uh, show the battery percentage, battery usage, battery saver, adaptive preferences, um, which by default, adaptive charging and adaptive battery is turned on. You can turn those off if you want to. I don't really recommend you doing that, but you do have that option, okay? Um, we got battery percentage, which of course I always wanna keep that on. Um, 
And I was actually, I'm speaking of this case as well, I was kind of, one of the reasons too why I don't typically do screen protectors on my phones is because I don't really care too much for how they can oftentimes uh, 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 create uh, a bit of an issue when you're trying to interact with the phone. The phone may, may not be as responsive because you're not touching the actual screen. But this, this protector that's on this case, I mean, I'm barely tapping it. I mean, just as I would tap the display, if this little barrier of glass wasn't in front of it, and it is very responsive. So I, I like that. I mean, again, this is a $2,000 device, and so I like the protection. <laughs> you know, it's just getting used to this, this, this hinge protection that has a, um, a kickstand on it, which you flip that out, and that's the kickstand right there. Um, but yeah, so um, storage, again, this is the 256 gig variant. I mean, so with all my apps that I downloaded, I mean, 28 gigabytes used, I've got um, uh, a, a, a ton of space left. <laughs> you know, like I said, you can get this in two storage variants, 256 or 512. They both come in 12 gigs of RAM. Um, but of course, you know, if you get that 512 gig variant, then, you know, it's going to be, you know, more money out of pocket that you're going to have to pay. All right. Um, so uh, pop back into the settings. We got storage, sound and vibration. Um, again, one of the things that I love about Android 13 is the ability to customize the uh, the, vol the volume, the ringtone and notification volume. Oh, well, now they don't have that here. See, I'm not a fan of that. See, other devices, they'll give you, so the ringtone and notification volumes are separate so that you can toggle one or the other. I'm not really a big fan of the volume being one volume setting for both the ringtone and the notifications. Ah, interesting. But of course, just your typical, you know, sound and vibration shenanigans, do not disturb, phone ringtone, live captions, spatial audio, now playing, um, again, which I talked about a little earlier in the video, shows the name and artist of songs playing nearby on your locked screen. That's a super, super dope feature. I mean, like I said, if you're at a coffee shop, if you're somewhere where music is playing, if you're at the mall, um, you know, uh, you know, if you're, I don't know, walking down the street and somebody, you know what I'm saying, somebody's, you know, coming down the street with the booming system, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're in the vicinity of that car playing that song and say it's a song you like it but you don't know what it is the pixel will pick it up and you can just look down at your lock screen toward the bottom where the where the time is on the very bottom and it's going to show the artist the name of the song i mean super dope feature and it's one of those it's little things like that that you know the pixel really pulls you in and then it's like, you know, when you start using another Android device that doesn't have that feature, then it's just like, eh. and see, I'm an audiophile big time. I'm a big time audiophile. I mean, so maybe some of you out there that are watching this content doesn't really care about such things, but somebody like me that's super, super into music. Oh my goodness. I mean that it's, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a lot of songs added to my playlist by now playing super dope app or feature rather, not an app, feature. Okay, media, vibration and haptics, which the vibration engine on this phone is, it's it's A1. It better be on a $2,000 device. <laughs> um, default notification sound, default alarm sound, clear calling reduces background noises during calls. So you do have that feature. And then, you know, dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sounds and vibrations, touch sounds, always show icon when in vibrate mode. All right, so we'll pop out of that. Now, under display, we've got the brightness level. Now, I have noticed this device gets a little dim. Like, I, I typically like to rock my phones at about 50%, but I noticed that 50% on the Pixel Fold here is, uh, it's, it, it's, it's pretty dim. You know, I have to, you know, crank it up to my liking to, to, to you know, 60 or above, you know, for a fact. I mean, so just be mindful of that if you like me, you know, like the rock your brightness level at about 50%. Um, just know that, I mean, yeah, it may, <laughs> you know, it, you, you may have to increase the volume or the volume, the brightness setting a little bit in order for you to properly, you know, see the device the way that you want to. All right. Um, 
Okay, there we go. I had to adjust the angle a little bit so I can prop this bad boy up. Again, this phone, it's got some weight to it. I mean, so definitely if you're holding it for an extensive period of time, I mean, you may experience some wrist fatigue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, where were we? All right, so under display, again, brightness level, adaptive brightness, lock screen, screen timeout, dark theme, screen saver, display size and text, nightlight, colors. Now, click on colors. I mean, by default, it's on adaptive. Um, you can switch it to natural, which is going to give you a natural, less saturated look. Um, adaptive is just, it just saturates the color more. I'm not see if you guys, I'm not sure if you could see the difference there as I'm switching it. But I mean, when you put it on adaptive, I mean, the colors, they pop a little bit more. They get a tad bit brighter. You know, it kind of oversaturates it a bit um, to make it look a little a little cleaner. In my opinion, um, I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm not going to I'm not going to change anything. It does give you a couple of examples here. Uh, so let's see. Natural. Oh, there wasn't too much of a change there. Like one th way to tell, like if you look at the blue sky under natural how it like it looks blue but then just watch when i hit adaptive it gets bluer i'm not sure if you guys were able to catch that on camera but you know it's a good way to tell and so and then again here let's see mm. slight difference i mean adaptive just oversaturates the colors a bit Again, like I said, I mean, I'm typically a fan of that, so I'll keep that where it is. Um, auto rotate screen, smooth display automatically raises the refresh rate from 60 up to 120 hertz for some content, increases battery usage. Okay, so be mindful if you keep on the smooth display, you know, it is going to drain some battery, but if you want to turn it off, you're going to be kept at 60 hertz. And let's see. Uh, yeah, that's that's painful. Wow. Wow. The, the, the choppiness. Wow. And it's interesting to think that this was the norm for a very long time before higher refresh rates became a thing. You know, I mean, things are still moving along, right? It, I mean, it's still moving, but it's just, it, it's just, it's, it's not as smooth. It's not as smooth at all. And so you need that adapt that that smooth display on. And then, yeah, clear difference. Clear difference there. Cle oh, my God. Clear difference. <laughs> Very clear difference. Very noticeable clear difference there. All right. So that is the display settings. Wallpaper and style. This is where you can go and just really you know, customize your pixel. Um, you know, you can, you know, themed icons, dark themes, you can pick all types of colors, you know, based on the color wallpaper that you have. I mean, Google will, you know, the pixel, you know, uh, the way the software is set up, it'll choose like a theme color for different wallpapers and so forth. Um, wallpaper that I, that I chose here, I mean, it's got a, got a nice little look to it, you know what I mean? Which is why I'm rocking with it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a permanent, you know, but for the sake of the video, I just wanted to show, you know, what the display looks like. You guys know me. Typically, you know, I got my picture of Michael Myers uh, in the background, but it's dark and doesn't really show off, you know, just the, 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 the how beautiful this screen is. I mean, but I, I, I may be changing back to that. That's just that's my standard wallpaper across all my devices. Uh, but for the sake of this video, you know, yeah, switch it up a little bit. If you if you hit change wallpaper, you're going to be hit with just uh you know a lot of different options things that you can choose from um emoji workshop didn't see that before when i first set up the device um but yeah you know say if you click on something you know you can preview it you know and you can it's going to show you that's what the home screen is going to look like if you choose that wallpaper this is what the lock screen is going to look like if you choose that wallpaper um let's see let's go to community uh, lens. So say if we choose this one again, you can see exactly, you know, what the home screen is going to look like. I actually like that. one. That's pretty dope. Looks like some, looks like some drone, some drone footage right there, you know, but, um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, 
a lot of a lot of customizations you know as it pertains to like you know your wallpaper and stuff like that so you know pretty pretty nice to have those those customizations to really personalize your device to really truly make it your own all right so under wallpaper and style we've got accessibility and you know if you're vision impaired hearing impaired i mean this phone is going to have all the things that you're going to need link to windows talk back display size and text color and motion extra dim dim screen beyond your phone's minimum brightness magnification select to speak accessibility menu voice access vibration and haptics timing controls system controls under captions we've got live caption live transcribe caption preferences real-time text or rtt under audio we got audio description here a description of what's happening on screen in supported movies and shows sound amplifier use headphones to improve audio sound notifications get notified about important sounds audio adjustment and then under general we got accessibility shortcuts and text to speech output and so if you're dealing with any kind of vision or or hearing ailment at all whatsoever the pixel fold here should have you covered if you decide to invest in one of these devices all right um now that's going to lead us down to security and privacy location safety and emergency passwords and accounts digital well-being and parental controls google system about phone and then tips and support if we click on about phone let's see i mean again sim trace oh maybe this is a dual sim we have sim sim slot one and two model pixel fold android version 13 and you can see android security update july 5th i mean so we are on the latest uh, uh security update uh google play system update june 1st i imagine that's going to be getting updated here pretty soon but uh yeah yeah we're we're all we're all ready to go here you know so uh that ladies and gentlemen is it for your settings menu now let's pop into the camera really quickly and again on the rear of the device you've got a triple camera system set up again 48 megapixel main 10 megapixel telephoto uh 10 megapixel ultra wide sensor um and again if you're familiar with the pixel things are going to look very familiar to you except you've just got this new five point uh, eight in aspect ratio and because of the fact that it's a foldable you're going to be greeted with another little option right here to the left of the um <clears throat> the shutter button and so just off the rip you've got camera video the different modes you've got panorama photosphere and then lens not a not a real robust uh, uh, a list of different modes but I mean it's a pixel camera so do you really need all that mm, probably not you know what I mean no knock on any other device that offer a lot more modes to play around with but I guess pixel is just like hey you know we're the kings of the crop as it pertains to camera on mobile devices we don't need all that <laughs> you know what I'm saying um so yeah a little thin in the modes department okay we got portrait mode long exposure and what that is, is adds a creative blur to moving subjects in the scene. Hold your camera still to capture professional looking photos without a tripod. Okay. Um, yeah. And then we have the, the world famous night sight. All right. Now, a lot of people are claiming that the camera here on the Pixel Fold is by far the best camera system on a folding device at least here in the US. I mean, there's other foldable devices that are in other markets that, you know, you don't really have access to without getting them imported and going through this and that to, to, to get them. Um, but I mean, as far as foldable devices that you can buy here in the States, here in North America, it's, uh, I'm hearing, I'm gonna test it, but I'm hearing that the Pixel Fold has the, the, the illest camera on any uh, uh, folding device. So, uh let's see here we'll click on the little arrow right there just to get to some of the settings we have uh more light for uh what is that typically that's on auto but it's turned off uh top shot is on auto timer is off full image again four by three or full screen okay then we'll go down to more settings you've got save location camera sounds google lens suggestions gestures frequent faces storage option or device storage and then under advanced 
Here is, you know, show dirty lens warning, raw or JPEG controls, store videos efficiently, social media depth features, enable time lapse for astrophotography, and then timer light. Okay, that's all under advanced. Then we got composition, framing hints, grid type. I do like a grid on, so three by three. You got no grid, three by three, four by four, or golden ratio. By default, it's on three by three. Manual controls, you got white balance, exposure. Your photo controls are camera, photo resolution. By default, it's on full resolution, or you can change it to medium resolution. And then you got save selfie as previewed, which save selfie photos as they appear in the viewer. Okay, the video options that we've got is video stabilization that's, uh, stabilization that's owned by default. And then we got audio zoom. What that is is zooming in on subject boost sound and reduces background, background noise. And then we have help and feedback and send feedback or help. All right, so that's what you're gonna find under more settings. Let's click out of that. Now let's uh, take a quick little photo here. Boom. I mean, in typical pixel fashion, um, no shutter lag at all whatsoever. Now let's swap this camera around. Let's see here. Okay, so it says try higher uh, quality selfie. And so this is the, again, the cover display. This is a 9.5 uh, megapixel camera here. So let me see here, let me see. Okay. Wow, impressive. Wow, that turned out really good. And another thing too is just, you know, Google is super good at just color tones and just really getting, you know, you know, your colors accurate. You know, it's not beautify, it's not like a beauty mode, you know, covering this or that or, you know, all it's the just how natural the photos look. I mean, the lighting in my office here, I mean, wow, that's that's really really spot on. Okay, here's the camera that I just, or the photo that I just took of my little hourglass right here. Um, yeah, now let's let's open up the device and see what this eight megapixel selfie camera is. How that's rocking. Okay, boom. God, this aspect ratio, I'm I'm really loving it. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Okay, eight megapixel sensor. See that big that uh, that 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 big wide viewfinder? Uh, I like that. I like that. That's hard. Okay, here. Let's see. Woo! Eight megapixels, man. That looks clean. Hold up. A little hard to hold, but but I like the fact that. The shutter button is right here. So you can do this with one hand. You know, again, this phone has some heft to it. I mean, so it's typically gonna be a two-handed operation unless you're just using that cover display. But I mean, let's see here. And it's super wide as well, wow. Okay. Wow, look how wide that is. And that's a very, very clean photo too. I was able to, you know, I got my, 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 my Philadelphia Eagles calendar in the back. My man Jay Hurts right there. You know, shout out to the Eagles. Eagle gang stand up. Shout out to my man Jay Will. You know what I'm saying? All you Cowboy fans out there, we ain't worried about y'all. You know what I'm saying? Giants fans, we ain't worried about y'all. Uh, 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 Redskins fans. Or, or, oh, I'm, pardon me. Pardon me. The Washington football team. <laughs> the fo Oh, the commanders. My bad. The commanders. We ain't worried about y'all, man. Philly, we right back to the Super Bowl, man. We getting it this year. We getting it. You know what I'm saying? But wow, yeah, that that is, that's an impressive looking photo right there. That's a very good looking photo. I mean, it's been a minute since I've taken a photo uh, uh, with an eight megapixel snapper, but I mean, that looks really, really good. Okay. Wow, that, that that's almost cleaner than the photo, than, than, the, than the selfie I just took with the outer display. Wow, but you can see, I mean, the the, the outer cover, the 9.5, you know, it's not a it's not as wide of a lens 
as this eight megapixel here when you open it up. Wow, wow, that is a solid photo. And just, I'm tripping over everything that it was able to capture in just this one shot. Like this looks like I would have had to have zoomed out or something, but no, this is, I mean, this is what it is if you're using this camera when you've got the device opened up. Man, that, that's dope. That's dope right there. And then of course, we have to zoom in to, to, to 1.4 times, and then that's the default. Hold on, let me take, hold on, let me take one more though, man, hold on. Oh man, look at that, man, Pixel. <laughs> Ooh. Oh man, Pixel, Pixel, Pixel. Whew. Man, okay, wow. That's uh, that's hard right there. Um, so here we go to split mode. All right. So you see, I got the Bible app on the left. I got the camera still going on my right. Totally separate deals going on here. This is very, very reminiscent to my experience with the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. Again, if I am multitasking, I'm only usually doing like two things at a time. I can't really imagine doing more than that. I don't think I want to do more than that, right? There's nothing going on that's gonna be so important where I have to be doing three things on my phone at once. But two things, I think that the Surface Duo and the Microsoft team, they nailed it. And I think that Google here just kinda, you know, stole some plays out their playbook or just piggybacked off of what Microsoft started with those two separate displays. This, this right here is, uh, yeah, this, this is, this is dope right here. This, this, I mean, this is, this is the way that I want to multitask. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's ladies and gentlemen, where I'm going to call this video. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. And keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech because I've got so much more content to come. Again, stay tuned. My Nothing Phone 2 is actually being delivered tomorrow. And so I'm gonna have my office and everything set up here. So as soon as I get home from work, man, I'm gonna start shooting that unboxing video and I'm gonna have that up in a couple of days as well. So, um, I know that Samsung Unpacked is on the 26th of this month in July here. You know, they're going to be announcing, you know, the, 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 the Z Flip 5, the Z Fold 5, the new watches, the Galaxy watches and all that. And so, man, you know, already put my pennies together, you know, for those. Um, man, you know, the new Sony Xperia, $1,400 device. You know, I'm thinking about grabbing that because it's been a long time since I got a Sony device. But yeah, just just keep it locked at Pristine Tech because I'm, I'm I, I I got it coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got it. I got video content locked, loaded, and coming down the pipe. You know what I'm saying? Hit that notification bell so that you'll be first to get notified when my videos do drop. Check out that content. Get down in the comment section, which is where I'm always chilling at. Let me know what you think about how you feel about the content, what you saw, what you heard. If you got any questions, hit me with any questions and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. All right, the only thing that I ask is that we keep it respectful in the comment section. It's, all great. it's okay to share differences in opinion as we talk tech, but we can agree to disagree respectfully. All right, so if we can manage to do that, I greatly appreciate that. Anything less than that, disrespect name call and all that jazz i don't entertain it i'll just block you and we'll keep this thing moving all right so thanks for letting me bend your ear on the new google pixel fold finally here i'm glad it's here shake up the industry a little bit i know that samsung may be sweating you know what i'm saying the samsung may be sweating z fold 4 here you better come hard with that z fold 5 and uh they better see they they better Samsung, they better put a full functioning outer display on that Z Flip as well. Because if not, Motorola is going to run away. They're going to run away with it as far as the clamshell of 2023. They're going to run away with this thing. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, man, y'all already know, please stay safe. Get spiritually fit if you haven't already. And 
keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. Catch y'all in the next video. Peace.